There were four reasons you highlighted in your report as to why these infections can happen. Mm -hmm. They were desire for notoriety, mm -hmm. desire for punishment for prior transgressions, right. mental illness, mm -hmm. and desire to protect the real perpetrator. All of these are potentials, yes. Nowhere in your report do you mention any evidence that would indicate this occurred in this case, did you? Well, I certainly can't testify to its certainty. I can only draw conclusions from what I've, from what I've read. So no, you cannot say that any of these actually occurred? Not with certainties. I can only provide to my best guess, if you will. Now, another type is compliant false confessions. Correct. These occur when a, when a child or anyone writing a false confession wants to end interrogation or receive a reward for confessing. Right. So juveniles are often quick to end any foreign uh, experience and return to the familiar. There was no indication that this was a lengthy interrogation. While he was, Jesse Duran was held in isolation after experiencing a traumatic event, two foreign events, while it might not have been long, it certainly was foreign. You said Jesse was in isolation? Not in isolation, but uh, I wouldn't count that necessarily as isolation. As there were two police officers with Jesse? Yes. So, no, Jesse was not held in isolation? No, it's simply in a foreign experience. Jesse was not held in a small windowless room. No, in a kitchen, rather. And the police officers did not use threatening tones of voices or threatening postures, did they? The police officers did not speak at all. There are reasons that police officers can influence false confessions. Certainly. One of these is coercion. Mm -hmm. There was no evidence that this confession was coerced, is there? There's no evidence beyond Jesse was moved from a foreign experience to another foreign experience. But there is no evidence that it was coerced, was there? No direct evidence, no. Another type is contamination. Correct. You weren't there that day. No, I've simply read certain statements on it. So you cannot say with any degree of certainty that this confession was contaminated with? Not at all. You have not reviewed any of the statements made by Jesse beyond this confession? Unfortunately, no, but I followed standard procedure and was able to move beyond that. You were not allowed to talk to Jesse Durant? Unfortunately, no, but again, this is standard procedure, so I was able to work beyond that. You weren't allowed to talk to Jesse Durant because Hayden Durant would not allow you to? No, but this is very common. So again, I've dealt with the situation before and moved beyond. You have no idea what Jesse's intent was that day? Beyond the information I was presented with, I can't honestly testify to its certainty. So you cannot tell anyone in this room whether Jesse intentionally pulled the trigger that day? Well, again, I can only add to my best conclusion. I can only propose my best conclusions. You can't even tell us that this was, in fact, a false confession. Well, I can only point out the indicators as I have before. Bring you back to my question, you cannot say with any degree of certainty that this was a false confession. Again, I can only propose my best conclusions. Is that a no? Uh, could you please repeat the question? That Jesse, that you cannot say with any degree of certainty that, j that this confession was a false confession. Uh, no, I cannot. You have extensive experience in the field of witness recall. Correct. Hayden Duran asked you to review the memory of Terry Chapin. I was given Terry Chapin's app. I was <clears throat> offered it. That's correct. You don't believe that Terry Chapin could have the memory, have minute-to-minute -minute knowledge of what happened four years ago? I was given a brief summation but I'm not really sure. I wasn't able to meet with Ch uh, Terry Chapin either. Would you like a refresher? Certainly.
of record reflect on approaching opposing counsel with this witness's report. Noted. Let the record reflect on approaching the witness with the same. Mm -hmm. Is this a fair and accurate copy? Yes, it is. Is that your name at the top? Yes. Were you given 24 hours to address this? Yes, I was. I would now like to re refer you to paragraph. Hold on, give me a moment. To paragraph 33. Certainly. Now, when you read through this, let me know. Certainly. As I said before, I have not met with Terry Chapin before, so quite frankly, I. Uh, <clears throat> All right, I have. Okay. So, as I asked, yes. you were skeptical. Okay. Uh, you, you were skeptical that Terry Chapin could have minute to minute memory of what happened four years ago. I was. You were skeptical that Terry Chapin could have knowledge of the direct quotes that happened four years ago. From the little information I was provided, I was. And you were also extremely concerned about Terry Chapin's statement that she was 100% sure of everything she saw that day. Yes, I was given brief summations of certain individuals by, uh, by uh, my attorney. And so I had to draw conclusions for each of these. Um, from the little blurb about uh, Mrs. Chapin, I simply wasn't able to draw too much from her. But you were able to draw such a confident conclusion that you put it in your report today. I was asked to testify on these four blurbs, so yes. Due to Ms. Chapin's intoxication that morning, you don't believe that she does have proper memory retention. From the little board I was given, no. You don't think that Terry Chapin's statements of the events that day should be trusted, do you? From the little information I was given, no. No further questions. Permission to retrieve the report from the witness? Granted. Any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Bashir, what did you review when forming an opinion about Terry Chapin? I was given small blurbs on each, on four individuals. They were little more than single sentences. So, uh, just general summaries of what these persons have to offer to the case. And you've never met Terry Chapin? No. So, do you believe that your opinion of Terry Chapin is completely reliable? I cannot, I cannot make conclusions on Terry Chapin beyond the single sentence that I have been given. And now I'd like to talk about why you believe Jesse was behaving abnormally after the incident on August 18th occurred. Certainly. Could you just tell me a little bit about what you review when preparing for today's case? Yes, I reviewed the statement Jesse Duran wrote, as well as the affidavits of uh, Officer Dale Williams and uh, Hayden Duran. And what were you able to conclude after looking at this information? That Jesse was moved from one foreign experience, having her friend killed, to being, uh, being surrounded by two police officers. Well, it, that might not necessarily count as isolation, it's still a foreign experience, and being moved from one foreign experience to another is damaging to one's psyche, especially for a juvenile like Jesse. No further questions. You may step down. Thank you very much, Your Honor. 